One day, I read a story about such a goddess while playing a game. This is the goddess Ishtar, who comes into the story as a mastermind and screwed up her plan. So she is forced to hold the slate. I am a useless goddess is written on the slate. I learned some math through games, so I think maths are full of bizarre stories. But it's created because many natural phenomena cannot be interpreted. So I wondered if there still mean anything in telling maths. I plan to approach my research in these four ways. Finally, I will compare and contrast the above and make conclusions. Now, let me tell you the first story. It comes from Ishtar goes to the underworld. The goddess Ishtar entered the underworld alone. But she was killed by the queen of the underworld. For Ishtar to lift the underworld, she must find a replacement. When she came to where her husband Tams was, she saw that Tams was not sad. Ishtar was very angry and took him to the underworld to replace her. Tom's sister chased to the underworld. So the two siblings each spent half a year in the underworld. As a result, spring, summer, autumn, and winter appear on the surface, and the four seasons alternate. That's roughly what Ishtar goes to the underworld is about. Because of this story, I think myth is very funny. It is full of fantasy about natural phenomena and the whole world. This is also why I want to study myth. The second story comes from Greek myth. Its main character is Sisyphus. Um, well, I need to collate the flow of this story. Let's go straight to the next page. This may be clearer. So we can see that the process of things is probably like this. From this story, we can know that people with the wicked who could not be punished at that time can be punished after death. That means people in that time believe things done during life will affect after death. Now let's look at another story. The third story is from Greek myth too. Its main character is Asclepius. Asclepius was a half-human, half-god hero. He was very good at the medical arts. He had a road made of wood, a snake wrapped around it. This is a symbol of Asclepius, and this symbol is transformed into a simple icon and is widely used. This is a partial similar of his story. He saved many people with his medical arts and as a result, he invented medicine to make people live forever. But what he did angered Hades, who ruled the underworld. After all, without people dying, the population of the underworld would only decrease. Hades told Zeus about this. Asclepius then killed by the gods. Before analyzing this story, the first thing we can be sure of is that medical technology was definitely not as advanced as it is today. But people still created heroes with such a awesome doctor figures. From this, we can know that people at that time feared the disease and the death that is what bring. Now let's organize the conclusions of these two stories in the West. The story of Sisyphus exemplifies people realize for death and believe that things done during life will affect after death. The story of Asclepius exemplifies the fear of disease and death. What these two stories have in common is human belief that life was in the hands of gods. Now let's look at Eastern myths. This story comes from China and is about the king of hell called Yan Luo. Yan Luo is a general name consisting of 10 gods. They are the king of hell. 
They manage the life and the punishment. There is a book of life and death manage the lifespan. Good people can be reincarnated as human here. This story means people wish the wicked who could not be punished at that time can be punished after death. The judgment in the hill is related to good and bad. From this story, we can know that things done during life will affect after death, and human believe that life is in the hands of God. Now we come to a summary of the myths. People in that time believe death is not the end, and things done during life will affect after death. Human life is in the hands of God. So we know how people in the past think about death now, but what do people think about death today? Well, I can look up some papers. In this paper. We learn that some people organize a farewell ceremony for themselves to witness their own death. He said, "If death is coming, why can't we just face it?" Others said, "I hope that when I pass away, I can scatter my ashes into the sea, so that I can see all corners of the world." Now we can know that some people openly accept the fact that they will die. Many people fear death because they feel pain at the thought of losing all the good things that life can give them. For the young people of today, it is better to live in the present than to be filled with regret. Those who hope to scatter ashes into the sea, on the other hand. Clearly, bring an element of fantasy with them. After all, it is impossible to see anything by ashes. But this delusion clearly reduces one's fear of death. In this way, people feel at one with nature. Although there will still be people who are afraid of death, with the development of technology, people are gradually. Becoming more aware of it, people are gradually becoming able to face death. Compared to the past, perhaps modern people could be a little richer in their ideas, such as going to heaven or here after death, or perhaps reincarnation. Perhaps it is true that after this life, there is the next life.